Good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Even though we're not worshiping together in person, we are certainly united in heart and mind and faith in Christ our Savior. We rejoice to worship him today, to hear his word, and to be assured that his word works in our hearts and lives with the power of God unto salvation, with power to give hope, healing, and peace. May God bless our worship today. Again, we're glad you've joined us. Let's begin. Good morning, friends of God. Let's invite the Holy Spirit in. He's the helper that can help us understand God's Word. And His Word is the only thing that lasts. His Word is eternal. Help us to submit to your Word today, Lord, as we seek you.
about the Word of God today and how it is able to accomplish more than we could ever ask or hope even. It never comes back void. And we know that the Word incarnate has a name. The all-powerful King of Kings, Jesus. Word of God. The Word of God, light in my darkness, oh for the hopeless, strong and true. The Word of God, strength for the weary, a shield for those who trust. saying that your word never fails. 
that all things are possible through you, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 55. For the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return empty to me, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. And the mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and as the thorns grew up and choked, and as the, and the thorns grew up and choked them, other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. That sounds really cool, but what does it all mean? Well, uh, the seeds on the path uh, eaten by the birds symbolize that evil comes and snatches uh, away faith. 
And I think the seeds on rocky ground that, uh, that spring up and die quick, I think that symbolizes that someone hears God's word but loses faith quickly. And I think the seeds among thorns, um, but the weeds grow around them and choke them, mean that uh, people hear God's word, but they lose faith because they're more interested in money and selfish things. And the seeds on good soil that produce a lot and have big leaves, uh, I think that symbolizes someone hears God's word and understands how, and helps others and themselves. Let's pray about it. God, we pray that every day we hear your word by your spirit. You would soften our hearts and that our hearts and minds and lives would indeed be fertile soil for the reception of your word, holding in it fast with honest and good hearts and bearing fruit with patience. Amen. Amen. Now let's water these plants. We rejoice to confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, in the life everlasting. Amen. All right, let's respond to the message by proclaiming that Jesus is worthy. All our praise.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and he sowed some, and he sowed. Some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of, of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on the good soil and produced grain some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dearly loved and precious children of God, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What a joy to be in God's Word together today. Our text for today is our first reading from Isaiah chapter 55, where we hear in verse 11. So shall my word be, that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is our text. As I looked back on our recent scripture studies on Sunday mornings, and by that I mean my sermons, I realized that for five of the last six Sundays, we have been studying St. Matthew's Gospel with Matthew's Gospel as the text for our messages. 
So as much as I respect Matthew's gospel, and it's great, please don't misunderstand me, I'm thinking maybe it's time for a little break. So today we return to visit our dear friend, the prophet Isaiah. You will remember that no other Old Testament prophet is quoted as frequently in the New Testament as Isaiah is. In fact, Isaiah prophesied so much about the person and the work of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, that his book is often called the fifth gospel. So, in a sense, we're still looking at a gospel lesson for today. Today in Isaiah, we are encouraged to recognize the inherent power of God's word to accomplish his purposes. In this way, we will find comfort and hope in the sure word of our God, which speaks to us and works for us. The Bible is an ancient book, to be sure, but it is not an outdated book or a book out of touch with the needs of people today. The Bible still speaks clearly and powerfully of God's promises, God's promises of hope and healing renewal and restoration, promises which people today who are hurting and in distress desperately need to hear for themselves. In our text, God declared that when his word goes out from his mouth, it always goes out with his power to accomplish the purposes for which he sends it. God's word is enduring, eternal, and effective. Isaiah wrote, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven, it do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Now, if I told you that there was a new, safe, nutritional supplement in the form of a daily dose that could help relieve your anxiety, dispel your worry, help you relax, perhaps help you get better sleep, would you be interested? Might that be something that you might try on a daily basis? Well, I assure you there is something far better than a nutritional supplement in the form of a pill. God's word is sure. God's word is reliable. It is trustworthy. When God speaks, we can always count on his word. We can count on him to accomplish and fulfill what he promises. His plans never fall short of fulfillment. His promises and purposes never fail to be accomplished. When God says through Jesus, I will be with you always, he will be. And when God speaks through the Apostle Paul and announces, we know that for those who love God, 
all things work together for good that they indeed do and will. And when God says through Paul, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? We know that he will give to us all that we need for our lives of faith, service, and witness for him in this world. Years ago, there was a news story about an eight-year-old boy by the name of Walter Sedor. Walter was the lone survivor of a plane crash in Manitoba, Canada. The crash claimed the life of Walter's father. For 15 days, Walter sat all alone beside the wrecked and burned plane, waiting to be rescued. The Royal Canadian Air Force scanned 70,000 square miles of land looking for Walter. No trace of Walter was found until on the 15th day, a commercial airline pilot spotted Walter standing in a rock, waving feebly into the air. For 15 days, Walter had been without food, causing the emaciated and severely weakened condition in which they found him. They found him alive and safe, but a few more days, and he probably would not have survived at all. But one of the most tragic aspects of this story is that there was no need for Walter to go hungry. For when the plane crashed, a kit of food rations was thrown clear of the plane and was only a few feet from Walter the whole time. It contained rations of food for 24 days, more than enough time that Walter was alone before being rescued. But Walter never opened the kit, never benefited from the sustenance it contained. Many people today are like Walter. They're lost somewhere in the wilderness, not in the North Country, but in the wilderness of anxiety, the wilderness of discouragement, the wilderness of despair. But there is a survival kit close at hand containing the bread of life to feed and nourish and strengthen us in body and soul. My friends, God's word always accomplishes its purpose. When God's word goes out from his mouth, when we open his word and hear it and read it and listen to it and apply apply it to our lives. God's power comes with it to heal and bless, to nourish and strengthen, to lift us and enable us to find our hope and our joy in his promises. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you don't go it alone. Don't starve yourself. Know that there is a source of nutrition and strength God gives to you so that you may live under his promises, experience the joy of his presence, the wisdom of his spirit, 
and the blessings of his heart of love for you. May God bless us as we daily open and live in his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. Breath of God, breathe on me, breathe on me, breath of God, breathe on me. I come alive, I'm alive when you breathe on me. I come alive. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Most merciful God, Lord of heaven and earth, rule and govern your church and all her people, that she may be preserved in the pure teaching of your saving word and defended against all adversaries 
that true faith may be strengthened and love abound among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, bring earthly peace, not a sword, to our homes by your grace and mercy. Foster a common love and knowledge of your word among the members of families and guide their love for one another by your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, watch over all who make, judge, and administer the laws of our nation and preserve us from sinful contempt of good order and godly laws. Give to those in authority honor and integrity in their service and bless all who live in this land with your saving love and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, strengthen your people to hold fast to your word in times of sickness and trouble. We pray especially for John Bartlett, Rick Bush, Don and Darlene Nash, and John Schick. Sustain their faith in Christ, in his peace and in his life, and grant them healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. All right, it's that time again to sing our closing song. One last charge, a reminder that we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of him and give him glory. My friends, may you grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. My friends, may you grow in grace in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. to want to glorify you and give us the strength to do it this week and always. Have a great week, everybody. God bless. When peace like a river
attendeth my way when sorrows like sea Oh.